60 years for any company is a major milestone. We have Ken Ox with us today from Midwest Group. Uh, Ken, thanks for coming down to the studio and making some time. Thank you for having me. Appreciate being here. I want to talk about uh, your beginning with Midwest because it's, it is a milestone and, and you have a long history in Saskatoon and uh, we were talking off air about uh, Broadway and the things you used to do. Uh, let's go back and, and take us back to how it all started. Well, uh, when I first started in business, for sure, I knew next to nothing. And uh, I, I had a choice of uh, renting a building on 22nd Street or on Broadway. And I had talked to, I'm going to tell you, an old realtor friend of mine, Ob McLaughlin. And uh, he says, oh, no, you go to Broadway. I said, okay, we rented on Broadway. Um, at that time, Broadway was a really cool street. People walked, shopped for groceries. There was a fruit store there, restaurants, and kind of the way it was in the 60s. And uh, we uh, opened our store there, and uh, then you became friends with everybody on the street. There were Ray Willie the jeweler, uh, Billy Ellis the florist, uh, Wayne Lee the restaurant person, Bob Davidson owned the Farnham Block, Orange Crush Factory was on Broadway. Yellow Cab had a store, a, sh a shop on Broadway. Uh, the Red Robin Cafe, uh, I mean, it goes on and on and on. At any rate, uh, we, we were talking earlier about the Farnham Block. Uh, there was a restaurant, uh, there was a nightclub there that couldn't serve, you couldn't serve liquor in Broadway until 1985. So the uh, club was a coffee house called uh, the, the Crypt. And that's where uh, a lot of local bands played, and there was Humphrey and the Dump Trucks, the University Nine, uh, Joni Mitchell played there, uh, The Who, uh, the Guess Who, uh, Burton Cummings. All those people would hang around then, and uh, things just kind of took off from there. You know, our business was uh, selling car parts and painting cars and doing, uh, trying to make a living. And the expectations back then were so, uh, were, were, the expectations were never anything uh, as they are today for young entrepreneurs where you want to be bigger and better. And our deal was we loved doing it. And uh, I guess you want to make sure you had enough money to pay your bills. Making payroll, I guess, is yeah. the primary goal. Well, the payroll was yeah. me and my wife. <laughs> So if, if you look at the car parts business and then it started to morph into the, the building and, com and commercial buildings, I guess. Yeah, yeah we um, uh, actually back in that era in the late 60s, uh, we kind of head into a real recession and we were struggling to make a living and uh, we were painting cars and selling parts. And uh, our muffler shop became a good part of our business. So. We bought a, a piece of land out on 8th Street and uh, built a uh, building there, uh, which I found to be uh, relatively easy to do. And uh, we completed that building and then our automotive businesses picked up. But the building part of it sort of just was happenstance. We found another building and fixed it up and one thing led to another and fast forward 60 years, Building and being a landlord has turned out to be our business. And on the automotive side of things, you also had a, a maybe a parallel career of racing. Did that yeah. morph into that? Yeah, well, racing was a very integral part of my life. Uh, back, uh, I started racing in 1965 till about the mid-70s. And um, it was, again, something you could afford to do. It was exciting. Uh, it, drag racing was sort of a new thing and um, going 200 miles an hour was a big deal. And I just kind of started drinking the Kool-Aid and uh, spent some time in California and um, bought a top fuel car and we started racing. And uh, I, I, I don't know this for sure because there was no real, um, uh, the internet wasn't around and so on, but I think we were one of the first people in Canada to go 200 miles an hour but nobody knew what the other guys were doing because the country was so big. But something that really astounded me was um, I was inducted into the Canadian Motorsport Hall of Fame in 2002 
and that's in Ontario. My old race car, we rebuilt it and gave it to that museum. But I was just astounded that people in Eastern Canada knew what we were doing out here in Siberia of racing community. So that was an integral part, and uh, that just gives you confidence to do things that you haven't done before. And um, met a lot of people that influenced me, both just personally as well as uh, in construction and in racing, and uh, just had a, a very wide group of friends and a very good sphere of influence. I would imagine over 60 years at the helm that uh, you've taken a lot of hits, if you will, of uh, inflation. We've had 18, 21 percent interest rates. Uh, looking back, are, are there some lessons that you would leave with maybe people watching that would say that's significant? Hey, that's uh, that's called going to school. <laughs> <laughs> that's an education. Yeah, it's expensive. And, uh, well, it is. Yeah. But um, you know, uh, the eighth wonder of the world is compound interest. Works for you and works against you. Depends how big the number is. And inflation in the 70s was over 20 percent, and that really got your attention. Banks weren't lending money, and uh, the money you did have was earning quite a bit of money. You were afraid to spend it. Um, the other lesson you learn is always have a war chest. Nothing goes up continually. It's a cycle, and you know we've been fortunate. Uh, well, we went through about three different cycles in the, up to the year 2000. But after 2000, or about after 1989-98, um, we were kind of on an upswing till 2008, and then the rubber hit the wall, and uh, then we were starting to recover again. It's just cyclical, so you just got to remember it's not always wine and roses, you know. What do you say when uh, you, you look at Saskatoon home for you? but there's opportunities elsewhere. Do you kind of spread things around or do you regroup and focus on Saskatoon's been good to you? Uh, kind of both. Yeah. You know, uh, capital can sleep anywhere. Doesn't matter. And uh, when times really got bad here, we looked to the West Coast and then further down uh, south into the Washington State. And because we had an affinity for California and so on, we did stuff in those areas. Uh, the racing just gave us comfort to operate in those environments, and uh, it's been good, you know. But this is still home. This is the mothership. This is what feeds the dragon, and uh, it's it's been good. This is my life. This is my home. Always will be. What's your uh, strongest affiliation for the city that, that you see that we have here that we don't really have anywhere else that keeps you here? Uh, the world's a big place. I mean, you can move anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, I would just tell you the bottom line is it's the comfort in doing business here. But more than that, it's just uh, the friendship, the uh, your sphere of influence that you grow over 60 years you can't replace. And, uh, you know, we go south uh, for a little bit in the winter, you know, into Palm Springs. And your sphere of influence down there is much smaller. It's all people that are retired or the tail end of their work career, and they're they're cool and different different because you don't see them every day. Mm -hmm. But here, our our sphere of influence is quite wide. I, I work with guys on a shovel. I work with accountants. I have doctors and lawyer friends. It's just uh, it's a, an environment that you grow into. Can't replace it. I, I think one of the key things I've learned about you over the years is that you. You're not just married to the office, married to Colleen and leading in that way uh, with her, but you're on a shovel, you're on a measuring tape, and you're not afraid to get dirty. Uh, that's just, um, I don't know what you call it. It's, um, <laughs> it's not really a bad habit. It's just that I've always learned you don't ask people to do things you wouldn't do yourself. And in most cases, I can do it reasonably well or better than them. So you kind of lead by example. And I can't do that all the time now. Fortunately, I have some really good people that work for me that are way better on the shovel or the saw or the tape measure than I am today. But it's just a habit you get into. You know, some people get up every morning and exercise, and that's their habit. Or some people go have coffee. My habit is getting up and going to work every day. 
And you're very good at it. Uh, I know that with the architectural influence that you've had on the city, uh, and I'll speak to the heritage components with, uh, you know, the King George Hotel and, and the CPR station. Are, are those things that you kind of hold dear to you as maybe a headache when they were being constructed at Pride and looking back? Well, you know, the, the heritage buildings we bought, that was just uh, sort of happenstance. They were for sale. I thought they were cool. We bought them and give them a new life. And that part was good. The King George is a whole other deal. That one is Meridian. Carl and Colleen had the vision, and they're the ones that uh, come up with that whole concept and the amount of money they spent. And uh, it's uh, a landmark again in Saskatoon. We'll be around for a lot of years to come, to their credit, not mine. <laughs> What do you see for the future uh, looking out into the next decade? Is what uh, your crystal ball telling you that you can share? Well, it's, you know, Saskatoon will be, is a great place to live. Uh, the city's growing, which is good. Uh, the province has everything known to man to make it successful. We've got grain, lentils, uh, all of the agricultural crops, uranium, potash, heavy metals, diamonds oil, uh, potash, uh, uranium. I mean, this place should be Dubai North. Mm -hmm. And uh, just nobody is talking about it that way. You know, and our biggest drawback because of where we are is we don't have any direct north-south flights. And that's a huge thing that will ultimately happen. But um, it just isn't that political will yet. I think the Eastern Canada is maybe a little nervous about Western Canada. We're getting a pretty big stick here. And uh, obviously this next election will probably have a change in government and hopefully they'll look at our part of the world a little differently. I hope to be there with you and uh, thank you for your uh, continued success in Saskatoon and staying here. We wish you all the best. Thank you for your time. That's our show for today. I'd like to thank our guest, Father Ivan Ahachowski, as well as developer Ken Ox. I'm your host, Randy Shabila. We'll see you next time on Connect.